Let me welcome the rest of the gangsters. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to have you here. Before we get into matters, economy and everything that's happening with the AU Commission and uh, the campaign there, let's talk about um, you know, a very poignant moment that took place earlier this week, and that is the very sudden and shocking death of, of Kelvin Kiptoum. I remember just last week when, uh, you know, his world record was finally ratified, and I remember retweeting that, or is it re whatever we call it now. And it was such an exciting moment, like, for me. I, you know, there's a sudden, I think, element of pride that every Kenyan felt in a personal way. That's what it feels like for our athletes. And that's what it felt like for this 24-year-old uh, young man who went out there and, and did some amazing things. I don't know what your tributes are of that. And just as we do that, we will be speaking to uh, Michael Kinney, uh, who's our sports editor, and he's been in Wasin Gishu County um, throughout uh, you know, the minute we learned of his demise. He's been there. Uh, so we'll get to him in a moment. But I'd just like to get uh, some round of, uh, of comments. I'll start with you, Linus. Look, it was a night of very cruel contradictions. Yeah. I was actually watching the African uh, Cup of Nations final between Nigeria and uh, Ivory. Ivory Coast uh, when some texts from the office started coming through that there's something that has happened in Eldoret. Uh, you know, this is pa way past 11 uh, p.m. And I remember the feeling was that of frustration uh, when you know, one of our editors confirmed that um, uh, Kiptum had been killed in a road crash. I, 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 my mind just went back to the day Kobe Bryant, mm. uh, the American uh, basketball great, uh, crashed. And I remember that feeling of frustration where you wish sometimes that you can reverse that, that now, you know, death occurs, yes, but it's not correct. And that's exactly how I felt uh, on the night that Kiptum died. It was a very, very devastating uh, moment. And coming as it does, uh, and as you said, only a few days after the ratification of his, um, world, of his record. world record, I think he was going places. And um, uh, uh, just as a final point as well, I am a rural boy and I know what how progression starts. And you look at his family, you saw the father, you saw the uh, wife, the, the, and you saw the village. Change was starting to happen. Light was coming to this uh, home. And it was very devastating to know some of the things that we never knew uh, about Kiptum, that he was an only child. Yes. Only child, not only son, only child. That is all that the father had. I think as we uh, uh, condole with the family, there is one consolation. Uh, he left some children uh, with, with the wife, so um, at least there is some uh, part of him that remains with us. Yeah, and uh, you know, Jamila, even as you come in, you know, it's also to remember that his coach was also a young athlete, um, and you know, with whom that worked uh, very closely together, had, you know, Kenyan ties, was married to a Kenyan woman. That was also, um, you know, a big loss. And, and, and these are just the things we're coming to terms with, Jamila. It really was, Yvonne. And by the time of his death, uh, the late Kiptum already owned three of the top seven times in all time marathon list, the fastest times. And remember, this is someone who before 2022 was virtually unknown. Mm. Remember, he's a gentleman who um, had been unable to get into the athletics training facilities. He was, a, he was training on the road. He's a marathon road. He trained on the road. And that's basically what uh, propelled him to, to the Kelvin Kip tomb that um, the world knows and, and, and loved. And remember, in 2022, in December, he won the Valencia Marathon at a time that was a course record. And it was the fastest debut ever. And then he goes on and April scorches the London Marathon, course record. And then he goes ahead in Chicago and obliterates the world record, mm. two hours uh, and, and 0 .00, 0 0.35. But he was not satisfied because he was planning, uh -uh, Mwakahu wrote a marathon in, in April, there was a chance that he could go under two hours. You know, that's like the, the thing about marathon, going under two hours and keep two more well on his way to going there. And it reminded many of us about Samuel Wanjiru who passed away in 2011 and he was also a star that was rising. He, in 2008, Samuel Wanjiru became the first Kenyan male to win Olympic marathon gold for Kenya. And also he, he, his life also yeah. was cut short. So for Kelvin Kiptum, I mean, 
this was someone who was up. His, the, the direction of, of, of his career was, was just kwenda juu. But yeah. siku yake imefika. And, and you know, we say mu, tunapanga yetu, lakini mungu anapanga yake. Yeah. Isn't life fickle, Sam? One well, minute you're here and, and the next, who knows? You, you can imagine, eh, as you ref reference the reality of what happened less than 10 days ago, the ratification of that world record, and looking at that, and what it has even had to take, because he won the marathon last year in October, mm -hmm. and had to wait for close to three months, or, or even more, actually, it's almost four months for that ratification. And even what that means had not yet settled, whether it's um, in him wearing that proudly saying that I'm the world record holder, but also even the benefits that come with it, the award itself, the reward itself. I mean, he may not even have received it, and therefore it's, it's such a loss. And it's always devastating to see such young talents, young <coughs> dreams just being shattered in such a manner. Um, but also a reflection on He's almost self-made, and a lot of talent in this country is self-made. We live in a country where we, are, we continue to emphasize the place of talent, but you're not very good at nurturing it. So uh, to see such that has gotten to the level that he has and now gone, it just makes me think how many more cryptums shall we have in terms of uh, grooming their talents, which I think should be now a more deliberate effort by everyone in the society, but also in the authorities to be in a position to nurture more um, so that at least we can say the legacy of those that have gone ahead of us is not lost. Yeah, indeed. And you know, it's something you're saying about being self-made. Marathons, I mean, if, if you've done a run or a jog, you know, it's, it's a lonely sport, right? It's not a team sport. It's not it's like not. football. You don't have people edging you on. Uh, you are basically chasing against the wind and for him to have the strength and discipline and mental fortitude to achieve what he had at the age of 24 is absolutely amazing. Mike Okini joins us from Wasangishu County where you have been there Mike uh, since the story broke um, you know speaking with athletes family um, I want to hear your reflections uh, Mike you've been covering um, athletics for many years now about what sort of promise uh, that Kelvin Kiptum held. What, what lay ahead of him? Thank you very much, Yvonne, and I'm uh, glad that um, Kiptum has brought a lot of interest in athletics, especially marathon. If Sam Gituku is cracking up his numbers and talking about figures that are related to the marathon course, I'm very happy about that because he's disinterested in uh, marathon, but only Manchester City. But back to your question, it is one of those things that you look at and you wonder, what if? Because three marathons, two course records, one world record. And he had said, I'm going to run 158 in Rotterdam. One hour, 58 minutes. Under two hours by two minutes. So that's the kind of promise that Kiptum had. And like you've all said, he's a self-made marathoner. The, the um, uh, conversation out in Wasengishu and um, also in uh, Nandi County and the counties in the Rift Valley is that all coaches have gone back to the drawing board. Kip Toom is one athlete that took them back to the drawing board, all of them, because training on your own, not having a training camp in the first place, then joining a group of athletes and you're going out to train, and then your first marathon and you put in a course record, and everybody says, okay, is it a fluke? Is it something that can be done again? Then you go to London, a very difficult course because of the turns and the corners, you keep slowing down, and he would have broken the world record at that particular point, and he says, if anybody told me five minutes before the race that I'm within the world course, uh, world record course, um, time, I would have broken that world record, and even lowered it to under two hours, if somebody told me that I am within the record. So it was deliberate in Chicago, that it's a flat course, and he said, I'm going for the world record, I am getting it. And everybody knew that the world record is going at Chicago. And there was no doubt, absolutely, that if he made it to um, Rotterdam, he was going to break that world record and go further under two hours. Why? Because Rotterdam is a flat course and it's one of the courses that is below sea level. We know about Netherlands and how they reclaim land. So Rotterdam is, some parts of that course are be below sea level and it trains in high altitude and in high altitude is able to clock those good numbers. So he was going to do that. He's a an athlete that had a lot of promise, if he made it to the Olympics, we know for sure it would have been a great, great, great battle between him and the great Eliud Kipchoge and who was going to pick the gold, not even who is going to um, uh, take the silver. The battle would have been between two Kenyans, the greatest of all times, and the guy who was going to take the crown from the greatest of all times, Yvonne.
and that he was able to do that at just the age of 24. I mean, if you consider by the time Eliud Kipchoge was uh, doing that Ineos uh, challenge, he was, what, in his early 30s? So that just tells you just, you know, what... 32. Yeah, at 32, yes. So that just tells you what, what lay ahead for, uh, you know, Kelvin Kiptum. Linus, I don't know if you wanted to weigh in on something here? Uh, y yes, Mike. And yeah. um, I, I just uh, wanted to check on uh, what the f sentiments are on the ground because... In moments like this, uh, an incident like this tends to bring out the rest of the issues that are around the athletic space, the life of Maradona's. And the impression always created, and especially around now, is this is a very lonely space that the structures nationally do not really support these athletes. They do these things alone, Mike. Mike, can you hear me? Okay. All right, yeah, so we'll take a look. Uh, we'll come back to Mike uh, in a moment because you know what you're talking about. And I think that happens with the death of, of, of every athlete mm. and we start to pay attention to the sport and how it is managed. I think we have, uh, we have him back. You can carry on, Linus. Uh, Mike, if you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you I'm loud and clear, Linus. Um, it, it is one of those things that you wonder, if we put in structures that support athletes and what their managers and coaches are doing, what more could we achieve? It's a lot. Just today, Amos Kipruto, who is a former London Marathon winner in 2022, was talking about his experience with Kiptum in 2023 at the London Marathon. And he says by the time they were doing 21 kilometers, he had a slight injury, but even if he didn't have that injury, the kind of pace that Kiptum was putting in and the kind of running that he had effortlessly. He doesn't think that anybody was going to catch him. So it, it tells you that we need to do quite much more. All these marathoners that you see, it's individual efforts and their coaches. Look at uh, Coach Gave, the late, who has been taken um, uh, back to Rwanda for burial. He believed in Kelvin Kiptum, and the relationship goes way back. Gave was an athlete that was training in Kenya, Rwandese training in Kenya to run the marathon. But Kiptum was one of the guides that he was afraid to run in the forest alone, but Kiptum would go with him. Then Gavin noticed that this guy has actually has talent. He's a teenager, but he can run very well. And he decided, can I coach you? Can I leave running and I coach you? And before they could even go into that discussion, they went for one race and Kiptum thoroughly beat him. So if you beat your person that you are taking to train with in the forest, he's supposed to be the big person, he's supposed to be the professional athlete, Gavi just decided, let me train this person and we see how far we can go. And through the tribulations of, I want to join this camp, nobody wants you in there, I want to join this camp, who are you, where have you come from at 21 years, why do you want to get into marathon, we've not seen you on track, we've not seen you anywhere. So he went in alone, Gavi believed in this athlete and he went on to conquer the world. Three marathons, three records, two course records, one world record. You wonder what more he could do if he just had the support. And if you look at his training um, uh, team, the ones he trains with, everybody says, we picked something off from Kiptum. The way he trained, the way he did his thing, it shows us that we need to go back to the drawing board. And it's not just in um, uh, marathon, but in athletics as a whole. We have to be deliberate and we have to be purposeful in what we do. We have to put in things. We have to take our coaches for training and all that. It's individual efforts that are putting us where we are. It's not a lie. Eliud Kipchoge is not the great Eliud Kipchoge because he has gotten all the support that he can get from the Federation in terms of training, in terms of coaching and all that. No, it's individual efforts and his training camp that has done all these things. So if we put in efforts, even from the lower ranks, right now we are, we are lucky because it's no longer, athletics used to be you go on track first, you finish off with the track, then you go on the road. You do the road races and the marathons. Now we have athletes that go straight to the road races. Kelvin Kiptum is one example. And you know that at 24, he's not yet hit his peak. He had four Four years to hit his peak, 28, 29. Yeah. And that means that the next Olympics is where he was going to be at where everybody else expects. So we need to put in more effort, as Lira says. Okay. Um, look, just one final one, because I know you've got some uh, fresh details for us about uh, the road ahead towards the final journey for Kelvin Kiptum. Um, what can you tell us about, you know, what the preparations are uh, in the lead up to his burial? Just really quickly, Mike. 
Uh, thank you very much, Yvonne. We had very special guests today visiting Kiptum's family, and this one was sent by His Excellency the President, Dr. William Ruto, because um, uh, they want to put in a house for him. They want to build a house for Kelvin Kiptum's family, and that's a three-bedroom house that has to be ready before he is buried on the 24th. So um, uh, the engineers were on site today. They just said, give us the place you want the house to be. Leave the rest to us. In seven days, we shall have a house here. And His Excellency the President says, I want to be there. I want to be in that house before this guy is sent off like a hero that he is. That is what we have um, uh, from the ground. And the engineers will be working on that. I know for sure, Yvonne, that um, uh, there were three sites that they were looking at. His father's um, uh, compound plus two other pieces of land that he bought within Kaptagat. So by the end of tomorrow, we should be able to know where the family has decided the house is going to be put and where they have also decided that um, uh, the late Kelvin Kiptum is going to be buried, Yvonne. Thanks for those details, Mike, and thank you for staying with this story. Uh, from the minute it <coughs> broke, we'll continue to count on you, and our viewers can do the same, uh, yourself and others <coughs> on the ground. Thank you, Michael Kenya, our sports editor there. Um, yeah, so it's promise, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. There it is. Um, even as the tributes continue and, you know, the road ahead leads to that, um, his final send-off, we want to talk a little bit about something else. Uh, let's uh, shift gears in our conversation now. Um, to another story that perhaps in the newsrooms we've been hearing a few murmurs here and there, and uh, it uh, finally came out today when um, uh, Raila Odinga, who's the Azimio Coalition uh, leader, uh, announced his candidature for the position of chairperson of uh, the Commission of the African Union. I wonder if we can listen 